Greetings, Earthlings. Today I'm back with a review of a microphone type that is sorely underrepresented on this channel, a small diaphragm condenser. The microphone that we're kicking this off with is the Lewitt LCT-140 Air. If you are interested in this microphone, it will cost you around $160. Like always, I'll throw some links in the description down below. For this review, I have the microphone running directly into the Focusrite 18i20, 24-bit, 48 kHz, gain at 130, and I will not do any kind of post-processing, but I may have to boost it a little bit in post, so check the doobly-doo to see what I diddly did. And now, let's talk about what comes in the box. What a surprise, you are going to get the microphone. You'll get this cute little foam windscreen thing that goes right on top of it. You will also get the plastic mounting system, which does come with a 5 8 to 3 8 inch microphone stand adapter, a zippered storage pouch, and a little bit of documentation. Then as far as the build quality, it feels all right to me. It does feel a bit light and it doesn't really instill much confidence, although I will admit, I don't boom microphones, so that doesn't really come into play. That lightness may be a huge benefit for you, but for me, where I just put a mic on a stand, it doesn't matter and it doesn't really instill confidence. But with that out of the way, the entire body is made out of metal. The metal grill is also very sturdy and it does not have any give to it. On the side of the microphone, you will find three switches. They are plastic and they feel quite cheap you will find a negative 12 decibel pad, an 80 hertz high pass filter, and a high boost. Then as we move around the microphone, we will find no other switches or dials. On the rear of the microphone, you will find the XLR port. And if it matters to you, this microphone is assembled in China. Then as far as the specs, this microphone has a cardioid polar pattern. It's not listed, but I am pretty certain it has a frequency response of 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, a sensitivity of negative 36.7 dB, a self noise of 20 dBA, a max SPL of 135 dB, an impedance of 173 ohms, and a phantom power requirement of plus 48 volts. Now I am spinning around the LCT-140 Air to 90 degrees so you can hear the off-axis rejection and coloration. We'll continue around to 180 degrees. Here's the rear of the mic. Continuing around to the second 90 degree angle. There we are. And then rotating and ending at the front of the microphone. Now let's test the plosive rejection of this microphone, but I don't think any of us should expect it to be good because it doesn't seem to be designed for close-up vocal use, especially without a pop filter. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Do not use this microphone for vocal use without great mic technique or a pop filter, please. <laughs> Now I'm right on top of the microphone to demonstrate the proximity effect on this thing. Now I'm about three inches away from the mic with it pointed at the corner of my mouth and here's how it sounds. Now I'm about one foot away from the microphone, two feet away from the 140 Air, and about four feet away from the Lewitt LCT 140 Air. And I also want to include a few samples with the mic in different locations. So currently I'm six inches away with it slightly off axis from my mouth. Now I have the microphone just above my head, about nine to 10 inches pointed at my mouth. And here's how it's sounding in this position. And now I have the microphone at the bottom of the frame. It's still about nine to 10 inches away from my mouth, but it's pointed upwards instead of downwards or from the side. And here's how it's sounding in this position. Now I'm typing on a keyboard with Gatoron blue switches to see how much of my voice versus how much of the keyboard it picks up. And for the Leet Gaming folk, now I am typing on the sad W and spacebar keys. Here is how the microphone sounds in a well-treated room. Now here is how the mic sounds in a completely untreated room. Because we can, now I have the microphone booming myself from underneath and here's how it sounds in the same environment. And just for another example, here I have the mic booming myself overhead. 
I know it doesn't look like it, but I can assure you it's pointed directly at my mouth, and here's how it sounds. Now I want to see how well the microphone and the provided mount reject shocks, so I'll go ahead and tap on my desk to see how much of that it rejects. And then I'll tap on the boom arm. And like I always do, I need to annoy you, so I will tap on the body of this microphone to see if there are any kind of resonant frequencies. Next, I want to do a quick test to see how the provided foam windscreen affects the tone of the recording. So right now, I'm about six inches away. I do not have any filters engaged. And here is how it sounds without the foam windscreen installed. And here is how it sounds with the provided foam windscreen at the same distance. No changes have been made. Do you hear a big difference in the audio? I know that Lewitt does a lot of work to make their accessories as acoustically transparent as possible, but let me know in the comments down below, do you hear a difference in the sound? And now let's go ahead and see how the on-built filters work. Currently, the microphone is in neutral mode. I do not have the pad, the high pass filter, or the high boost on, and here's how it's sounding. Now I've switched on the 80 Hertz high pass filter and here's how it's sounding. You should hear a slight decrease in the low end of the recording and there you go. Now I've switched off the high pass filter so you should hear a bit more low end, but then I've engaged the high shelf or the high boost on this and you should be able to hear a lot more top end, a lot more crispiness to it. You can really hear that coming through there and there you go. We have one more to do. And now I've engaged the high pass filter again and the high shelf is still engaged. So you're getting that cleaned up low end and that boosted top end. So you are getting hyper detail, hyper clean detail. And there are the filters for you. And now we're back in the neutral mode and in my headphones, it sounds much more pleasing. Last thing we're going to do is engage the pad to see what kind of noise that generates. So let me go ahead and there it is and you hear that big click when we flip it on let me go ahead and disengage it and there we go it slowly gradually comes back that's the pad for you now like i always do we're going to do a quick comparison between the mic that we're reviewing and a bunch of other microphones on the market so we can see how it stacks up against the competition and i have to say i love small diaphragm condensers because they take up so little space Although I have legitimately lost one over the last year and I don't know where it went. Let's start the comparison thing now. We'll start on the mic that we're reviewing. We are in neutral mode, so no filters engaged. Six inches off, gain at 130, and here's how it's sounding. First up, I am on the Rode M5. This costs $200 for a matched pair, so technically each of these is $100. I'm six inches off, my gain is still at 130. And here is how this sounds compared to the LCT-140. Let's jump back and do more comparisons. Back on the Lewitt LCT-140 Air, nothing has changed, and here's how it's sounding. Now I am on the Bayer Dynamic TGI-53. This costs $150. Again, I am 6 inches off. My gain is at 130. Check the lower third to see how much I boost each of these in post. And there you go, Bayer Dynamic TGI 53. Let's do more. Back again on the third time, this is the LCT 140 Air, the mic that we're reviewing. Here's how it sounds. Let's jump to the third microphone. Now we are on the Sennheiser E614. This costs $200. I'm six inches off and it is extremely quiet. I had to increase my gain to 330 for this small diaphragm condenser. There you go. Sennheiser E614 versus the Lewitt LCT-140 Air. Let's do more comparisons. Again, we are on the microphone that we're reviewing. This is the LCT-140 Air. Nothing has changed. Make sure to check the lower third to see how much I boost each of these in post. And let's jump to the fourth microphone. Now we are on the SE Electronics SE8. This costs around $285-ish. I am six inches off, my gain is back at 130. This has a very healthy output, and the microphone that I lost is the SE7. 
I have no idea where it went. <laughs> it was here. I've used it. I just don't know where it went. This is a problem. This is the problem with small diaphragm condensers. But this is the SE8. Let's jump back to the Lewitt and do more comparisons. All right, quick intermission. This is the Lewitt LCT 140 Air. Here's how it sounds. Let's jump to the next one. Now we are on the Octava or Octava MK012. I have opted to use the cardioid capsule because we're comparing it to another cardioid small diaphragm condenser. This costs around $300? $300 for the kit if you can find a single MK012. Six inches off, gain at 130, and here's how it sounds. Let's jump back to the Lewitt and do more tests. All right, I believe this is the sixth comparison that we're doing as cars rev their engines outside. I hate them so much. Why are they so loud? Here's how this microphone sounds. Let's jump to the next one. Now we are on the Neumann KM185. This is a hypercardioid small diaphragm condenser. This costs around $900. Six inches off, gain still at 130, and here is how this sounds. $900 versus $160. Are you getting a big benefit? You ought to be, but you tell me. Let's jump back and do two more comparisons. Again, we have the Lewitt here. Here is how it's sounding. Nothing has changed. Neutral mode, gain at 130. Let's jump to the seventh, sixth, seventh microphone. Now we are on the SE Electronics RN17. This runs around $1,170. And it has a transformer, I believe, designed by Rupert Neve. That's the selling point of this SDC. And I am six inches off. My gain had to be boosted to 330 because this is a quiet boy. And here's how it sounds. Let's jump back and do one more comparison. And I believe we have one more microphone to go. But first, the LCT 140 Air neutral mode gain at 130. Let's jump to the final microphone. And lastly, we are on the Neumann U87AI. This is a multi-pattern large diaphragm condenser microphone. I am on the cardioid mode. My gain is at 1130. And here is how this sounds. Oh, this costs $3,600. Not a fair comparison, but this is the constant from video to video. Neumann U87AI from... Music test? I don't know what's happening. Do you think that everything will be alright? I'll tell you that it won't Cause we're all gonna die Hit that note. Yeah, I've been feeling super doomery lately. I'm just fine. I'm not depressed. I don't think there's anything to be depressed about. The end isn't nigh. We're not all going to die. And the conclusion to this video is super duper important. So, so let's do that. Honestly, I'm fine. <laughs> All right, I think this is going to be a really fun rabbit hole that we dive down looking at small diaphragm condensers. And as far as a jumping off point, I think the LCT 140 Air is a great place. And first up in terms of pros, they have made this thing quite versatile by including a built-in pad, a built-in high pass filter, and a built-in high boost. And also the polar pattern on this thing is really nice and you get very minimal and pleasing off axis coloration. But then as far as cons, the build quality leaves a little bit to be desired with the switches feeling quite weak. And then the main issue that I have with it is the self noise. 20 dBA is quite high 
So if you're going to be miking up incredibly quiet sound sources, it may start to become an issue. Then as far as my overall thoughts and opinions of this microphone, on the electric guitar, I almost liked it. It's so close and so cool sounding. The lows are nice and controlled because you do have a bit of a roll off. The mids are neutral, but then the top end just gets to be a bit too detailed, a bit too articulate, and a bit too overpowering. I think the top end just got to be a bit too much but I almost loved this thing. So cool sounding. Then on the acoustic guitar, I don't necessarily like it solo, but I imagine in a full mix, this would be really easy to work with. There isn't too much body, so it sounds a little bit weak in the low end. Again, the mids are pretty neutral and inoffensive. And then the top end, you get this really hyper detailed, really hyper articulate sound, which is typically why you select a small diaphragm condenser because you get a lot better transient response. And with that being said, the reason I didn't like it solo on the acoustic was the lack of body, which is why I think pairing this with a ribbon microphone would probably work really well. You get that body and warmth and depth from the ribbon, and then you get this hyper detailed articulate top end from the small diaphragm condenser. Next up for singing, this was the shocker for me. This was a big surprise. I do not think of small diaphragm condensers as singing microphones, but I really enjoyed it here. The airiness to it was just a really nice touch. You have that neutral midsection, and then the low end just gets out of the way. I think there's bugs flying around, and I think I'm about to be murdered by a spider. But I really enjoyed it on singing. And lastly, on spoken word, at any kind of distance, I find the low end to be a bit too lacking and empty sounding. The mids are neutral and nice, but then when you get to the top end, it is so detailed and so articulate that I think it becomes top heavy and a bit distracting. So I think you would need to really play the microphone and use that proximity effect to your benefit if you're using this for spoken word. And to wrap up, would I recommend the Lewitt LCT-140 Air? I think so. At $160, this is quite a versatile small diaphragm condenser. Is it the best sounding SDC in this lineup? No, but I think the better sounding microphones were a bit more expensive. The SES-8, the Neumann KM-185, and then the cream of the crop, the RN-17, I thought those were all outstanding. So if you're just looking for your first SDC for general studio use, I think this is a really interesting option because of the versatility and the low price point. All right, I think that's going to wrap up for today, but I would love to hear from you in the comments down below which of the microphones in the lineup was your favorite. And being that this is my first proper modern review of a small diaphragm condenser mic, let me know in the comments if there's anything that I'm missing that you want to see in future reviews. If you found this video fun, interesting, or helpful, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If you hated it, give me a big old thumbs down. I hope you have an amazing Halloween. This bug is really distracting me. If you want more videos, subscribe. If you want to support the channel and become one of these amazing people over here, you can do so by clicking that join button and joining at the $5 tier or higher, or going to patreon.com slash podcastage and joining at the $5 tier or higher. It really does help me. Where is this bug? It really does help me continue to bring you these videos. So until next time, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. I see you. I'll talk to you next time. Have a happy Halloween. Bye-bye.